Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. This is our UEFA Europa League preview show for the first leg of Shamrock Rovers, Derry City and Cork City's um, first round ties in the UEFA Europa League for 2017-18. Yeah, competitive football's back and it's not even July. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Um, anyway, Josh, we're going to move on first to Cork and they play against Lavadia Tallinn in Tallinn on Thursday. Um, we don't know that much about Tallinn, but... From a Cork point of view, this should be from our previous encounters with Estonian sides, with Chamber Crofts, with Flora Talon and stuff like that. should be a pretty straightforward game for an informed Cork. Yeah, you'd imagine so. <coughs> Look, we know ourselves, Cork have had a great season so far. I'm dropping a couple of points and ironically that being away to bottom place, Galway. But Listen, Galway draw against <laughs> everyone. Home and away, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how good you are. <laughs> yeah, but look, the... It, Cork have been fantastic goals coming from all over the team. Obviously, Shawnee McGuire's had a had a great season so far, and he's going to have a couple of rounds of Cork in Europe anyway. Yeah. And the likes of Stephen Dooley, Carl Shepherd, um, Greg Bulger, Gary Buckley, look, they've, they've Kevin O'Connor, yeah, Gary Marcy, look, they've they've, <laughs> yeah. they've run a surmountable uh, amount of talent in the team, and I I don't see this being a problem for them at all. I don't see European football posing a challenge to the Metallas in the the way it's played. So yeah, I think it'd be playing sailing in this in this first round. Hopefully, anyway, a good performance and talent will go a long way to that. Yeah, yeah, like they're playing against the Lavadia team who didn't even win the Estonian League this year, which is not exactly covering yourself. Oh, in glory. Is that in the yeah, <laughs> um, but. I do like. I do think it will be tough for Cork over there. I don't think it's going to be entirely straightforward where they're just going to go and beat them five six nil. They might, but I doubt it. And it's going to be a tough. It's going to be a tough, especially away from home. Um, I know Rovers struggled over in Florida. Was nil all, wasn't it? Yeah, in the Lecoq Arena, I think. <laughs> what it's called, yeah. Um, but I. Cork should get through it, and the way they play football, I think, will suit them in Europe. Uh, playing that kind of a more progressive style of football than maybe what John Caulfield would have played a couple of years ago with his Cork teams in Europe. I think that actually aids you because you see what Dundalk did last season with playing that brand of football. It actually works really, really well against the weaker teams if you just, you know, are a better team and a fitter team and everything like that. Just be patient, I guess, is, is, yeah. is the real key. Exactly, don't be getting worried if you've not scored in the first half hour away from home. Like, um, but obviously you were involved with UCD when um they were in Europe a couple of years ago. And how important is it for an Irish team to kind of be in mid-season at this stage of the Europa League and Champions League to kind of maybe catch a lot of these teams cold? I know Estonia probably. I know the Estonia league I think is on at the minute, but. At the same time, it's not as far into the season. I don't think it's we are yeah. over here, and in general, with you know, with the Irish teams as they progress in Europe, they'll be playing teams who are just simply in their preseason and haven't actually played a competitive game yet. Yeah, well, look, it's it's huge, and it'll always be the FAI stance that will stay at summer football along with the weather we have to for Europe to to try and gain as many coefficient points as we can and try and get a top sides uh, seeded so we're progressing through Europe and they can get money and I think it's absolutely ludicrous that none of us were seeded this year yeah, it's a bit especially strange, Dundalk weren't seeded at this stage of the Champions League either yeah no, it's very strange considering how well they done last year and how well Dundalk did last year how well Cork did last year as well it's, I don't get some of the seeding sometimes in the sense that how are Levadia talent seeded and Cork aren't look I'm and not paid enough to understand the UEFA UA for coefficients <laughs> are more difficult than I don't know solving the peace process in Israel and Palestine um, oh no we got into politics I'm not getting into politics I definitely don't want to get into politics on this um, but how do you think that Cork will get on the first leg well obviously we on to talk about um, you know reacting to the first legs and previewing the second legs next week but how do you think they'll get on over in town well, they'll have enough to go to go over there and do well. I think the the injury to John Dunleavy might cause a, a slight problems for them. Yeah. But I still think the way they play that they can be solid enough, and especially if they get that early goal, John Caulfield and his team have enough experience to be able to see games out even at that level. Yeah, you look at a player like even Carl Shepard being in the side who has obviously been there and done that before with Chamber Rovers yeah. and this competition and got to the group stage of the Europa League with them. That's you know that experience is invaluable, and there's a lot of players with European experience, and most of them with Cork last year. So I, they should get through handy enough. I think they'll probably only win. I would say one, maybe two nil. 
yeah. in Tallinn, but it should be handy enough playing Salem when they get back to Turner's Cross next week as well. We'll move on to what I would say is the next toughest tie for an Irish side. We'll get on to the toughest one after that. But Shamrock Rovers travelling to Iceland to play Steinen. Yeah. And a Steinen team who knocked out like Poznan last season in the um, Champions League and then were knocked out of that round of the Champions League, dropped into the Europa League, into the playoff rounds of that, and were then knocked out um, by Celtic 6 1 in aggregate. So, or it must have been two years ago they were knocked out by or were they knocked out in the Champions League by Celtic then? They must have been knocked out yeah, in the Champions, Champions League, League by Celtic 6 1. My apologies. They were knocked out 6 1 in the Champions League qualifying rounds by Celtic last year. So, they're now slouches as far as European football goes. No, no, certainly not. Look, they're, um, they're a team that a lot of people might end up, might end up knowing a lot about. But when you, when you look it up and you see they've uh, played the likes of Celtic and Lech Poznan, who are now pushovers in Poland either, you, you no. see that they're, they really they've actually they won in Poznan, which is, trust me, from someone who covers Polish football and has an affinity for Lech like Poznan themselves, it's no mean feat to go and win in Poznan in Europe. Because that stadium is packed out, it's boisterous as anything, and to go over there and win when your team is coming from Iceland, who maybe don't have the atmospheres like that, that are maybe as you know intimidating. It's a big thing for a team like that who starting in our club, who have built themselves up. They are a new club in Iceland, really, in terms of being at the top of the Icelandic game. And they have a lot of valuable European experience. Something that for a lot of the Shamrock Rovers players, they don't have. Yeah, true. But as we said about UCD earlier on, when I was involved with them in, in 2015... Well, starting in are also, I think, six games into their season now as well. Yeah. So, But I still think experience... Experience and, and I think the way the way football is played in Europe almost cancels itself out these days I mean I know yeah. Shamrock Rovers are a really really young side and that could pose a problem to them but well you go through kind of the Rovers players and you've got Chikinski has played European football before obviously Rona Finn was an integral part of Dundalk's run last yeah. year which will be a big thing for them Darren Meenan was there too yeah. so those couple of players are good for what is a very young side to lean on yeah Finn in 2011 he would have been part of it would he? yeah he was, yeah, he was well. part of the Europa League team yes, that's so he's done it twice yeah. um, and he's a big he, as obviously his captain as well <coughs> he will be kind of a big factor in if Rovers are going to push forward Yeah. Um, but Iceland on Thursday is going to be difficult for them isn't it? yeah certainly going over there I mean look they've got to go there they, they've they got to acknowledge that domestically they've had a fairly average season up to now yeah. they'll want to make this 2017 season somewhat memorable for them and they'll do that with a European run but they've really got to go there with a lot of hunger a lot of desire Stephen Bradley has to get these young players up for the game yeah. and if he does that yeah they've every chance of coming away with some sort of positive result on Thursday yeah I would go with a tentatively positive one all I thought you were going to say a 10 no, in no. You're off <laughs> <laughs> a tentatively positive one all in Iceland I think if Rovers can avoid defeat and get a goal that would be a really... Obviously, to win would be the best scenario, but realistically, I think going over there, getting a draw and maybe getting an away goal or even two away goals would really set it up to be good for them going into the second leg at home in Tallinn next week because they'll get if they are in it, they'll get a good crowd, be a good atmosphere at it, and Rovers have been very good at home this year. Yeah, I'm going to... So, yeah, I'd agree with you there. I think oh. I was kind of was kind of sitting there thinking to myself that... Maybe goal scoring might be a problem. Yeah. But I think the confidence will be up after scoring four against Strata there last Friday and I think yeah. I think they can take a lot of confidence into that. Otherwise I was almost edging towards a, a one 0 win for Star for Stajan, but I think now with with them four goals, a Tala behind Rovers on, on Friday night, I'd see them scoring goals and I'm gonna agree with you, I'm gonna go to one all draw. Yeah. Okay. And we'll move on then finally to Derry City, who by far on paper have the most difficult tie out of the three. Against FC Midgetland from Denmark. Um, they've just got, they've had absolutely no rubber to green no. this year, have they? No, none whatsoever. Especially this tie in Europe is very, very difficult for them. Um, it's a team who, just to start off with, they're playing a team who two years ago beat Manchester United in the knockout stages of this competition. Um, a lot of United fans will remember from Marcus Rashford made his debut for Manchester United that night and got a couple of goals. But Midgetland beat them. And... Their team, who Rafael, Rafael van der Vaart plays for them, Simon Poulsen plays in midfield for them as well. He's got 50-odd caps nearly for Denmark. He's played in 
um, played in some of the top leagues across Europe. He's played in Italy and France and stuff. So they are a really tough prospect for a Derry side who have been pretty inconsistent for most of the season. Yeah, well, ever since the the unfortunate event happened to Roy McBride, they've just found it hard to, hard to kind of kind of revive their whole their whole campaign. They've started to do it now and in fits and starts. Obviously, the, the defeat to Cork on it won last week. That's nothing to be embarrassed about. But yeah. really putting a run together has been tough for Kenny Shields and so it's understandable. And you now hopefully for them they can go over and over to Midland and pull up pull a shock off. But as as we said, it's the hardest of the three by a mile. Yeah. Um. Do we think they have any chance? Do you know what? I think it'd be tough for them, but I can see them putting out a draw. Over okay, it. I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with three one midget land. So an away goal to take back to Sligo next week, um, which would be big for Derry. If yeah. they get away goal, obviously they still need two then, but. It's doable at yeah. that point, I think. Just in case anyone wants to get the second leg, is in the show. Yeah, it's in the showgrounds. Obviously, Derry don't have use of the brandy well at the minute. Um, but that's going to do it for a preview in the three games. Obviously, if you're a Cork fan or a follower of League of Ireland in general, look out for Ike Larnica versus Lincoln Red Imps, winner of that place, Cork, in the next round. And Fern Kavarosh versus Yalgava, who the winner of that will play Derry if they can pull off a shock against Midgetland. Rovers will play Mladenbolislav from the Czech Republic in the next round should they get through. Thank God so, he's here because I could not pronounce that. <laughs> um, so we will be back next week with um, a review of the first legs and talking